So moving on to uh, part number three in this chapter, we have completed up to uh, print spooling, and now uh, we have a question from the 2012 past paper. <coughs> it goes on to say, uh, the company employs a network manager. One of the manager's task is to allocate usernames and passwords to new staff. Uh, when staff log on for the first time, they are prompted to change their password, and staff are encouraged to set strong passwords. Give an example of a strong password. Okay, so an example of a strong password would be a, a password which is more than eight characters in length, which has uppercase letters, lowercase letters, which has numbers in them, okay, which has special characters in them. So you can just write a random password over here and then explain it over here as well, okay. So if you come and look at the marking scheme as well, you'll see it says minimum six characters in length, uppercase, lowercase, symbols, punctuations, which means special characters. Uh, like exclamation mark, then hashtag, then the dollar symbol, the percentage symbol, okay, these special characters should be included in the password. It should consist of letters and numbers, okay, it should not be related to the user, it should be a random mix of characters, it should include spaces, okay, so if you mention any, uh, they're giving you uh, one mark, I think, for the example, and two marks for the explanation, okay. So, now another one goes as the type of software that controls the hardware and prepares it to run other software is the operating system. Okay, the operating system controls the hardware and prepares it to run other software as well. Okay. Uh, moving on to our final part of system software. Okay, so far under system software we have learnt of operating system and we learnt of utilities. Okay, now we come to the final part which is language translators. Okay. So the function of language translators are to convert the user's language to a language the computer can understand. Okay, we all do know that the computer understands the language which we call binary form. Okay, we call it machine language. This is the language the computer understands. The language that we understand is high level language. So when we communicate with the computer, high level language has to be converted into machine language. Okay, so that is done by the language translators. The language translators will be uh, responsible for converting high level language into machine language, okay, a language which the computer can understand. It. Similarly, when the computer responds to your request, machine language will be converted back into high level language using language translators. So, there are three types of translators present in the computer. Number one, assemblers, compilers and interpreters. These are three types of language translators that are available in all computers. Now we have completed system software. Okay, so if you if you go up again and uh, if you come to the top over here, this area is complete. Okay, this area is complete. It has three parts. One was utility software, one was operating system and the third was language translators. And now we will be moving on to application software. Before we move on to application software, a quick reminder, we did tell you system software is responsible for configuring and maintenance tasks of your computer. Okay, we told you this is a very, very vital component of your computer. This has three components. All three, co three components have to work properly. Okay, look here. We told you all three of these components have to work together in order for your computer to function. Any one of them not functioning, would allow the computer not to function. Is it clear? So that was system software. Now we move on to something which we call <coughs> application software. So what does application software do? Software applications help the user carry out specific tasks. Is it clear? Now system software was controlling the entire computer node. So now when you come down to application software, they are a collection of softwares, okay, which help the users carry out specific tasks, okay, that are not related to the operating system, okay, they have no connection to the operating system at all. So, applications or apps are usually downloaded from servers on the internet or can be purchased off the shelf. Purchased off the shelf means you can purchase it from a physical store or you can download it and pay for it from the internet itself, okay. So, normally what happens is you download an app from the internet or you purchase it from the internet. In today's world, that is what happens most of the time, okay? So, what are the categories of application software? Let's see. So, we have something known as word processing, okay? One 
category of application software is something which is known as word processing. What does word processing do? It lets users create documents that mostly include words but also images. They can also include tables, hyperlinks, equations, simple drawings and shapes and charts. Okay. So, word processing software is a good choice of application for creating letters, reports, essays, books. Okay. So, if you are ever required to do any one of these, the best type of software that you can use is word processing software. Under word processing software, there are so many examples that you can find. For example, there is a software called Microsoft Word, which is done by a company called Microsoft. There is something called Writer, which is done by a company called LibreOffice. Okay. So, these are examples. These are brands under the name word processing. Okay. So, moving on to our next category of application software, we have something known as desktop publishing. Now, desktop publishing is very, very similar to word processing software. Okay. Almost similar. Okay. The main difference is the way in which the software allows the users to work with complicated layouts. Okay. So, Desktop publishing software is mostly used to create magazine, newspapers and booklets. Okay. So, when you are given this kind of a situation where you are supposed to be creating a magazine, a newspaper, a booklet. Okay. The best category of software you can use is desktop publishing. Examples of desktop publishing, there is something called Adobe InDesign done by a company called Adobe. Microsoft Publisher done by Microsoft Office. Okay. Then we come on to spreadsheet software. This is the third category of application software. Okay, so spreadsheet software or spreadsheet applications are used to do calculations. Okay, so when it comes to calculations, spreadsheet software is the best. The category of spreadsheet is the best choice for you. Okay, so users can use and create formula and functions to perform automatic calculations on values that can be entered and changed later. So, examples of spreadsheet software, we have something known as Calc by OpenOffice and Microsoft Excel by Microsoft Office. There are so many examples, I am just listing only two for each category. Then moving on to another category of software, we have something known as database management systems. Okay. Uh, so, what does database software do? It is used to enter, edit and search data. Okay. So, some systems can also produce reports that dynamically display real-time changes to the data as it updates. Okay. So, when it comes to database, you can think of a school database, a supermarket database, a hospital database, a bank database. Okay. So, generally, database software is the best software to store and retrieve data in a very organized manner. Okay. So, examples of database management systems are you have something called base done by open office you have something called oracle done by mysql okay then you have for example microsoft access which is done by microsoft office okay so these are a few examples of database software moving on web authoring when it comes to creating and managing a website you will have to be using web authoring software okay so web authoring software lets users create web pages that includes text images and videos Okay, then web pages are constructed using HTML, which is hypertext markup language. Okay, in our practical chapters, we will be learning how to use this language. Then web browsers are used to view web pages. Okay, using a web browser, we can view websites, we can use web pages, we can view web pages. Okay, so examples of web browsers Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox. Okay. What is a website? A website is a collection of web pages. Many web pages will make a website. So, examples of web authoring software, we have something known as Adobe Dreamweaver done by Adobe. We have something called Edit Plus done by ES Computing. Okay. So, I have just listed only two. There are many more software which can be used for web authoring or for constructing a web page. Then we have something known as graphic editors. Okay. So graphics editing application allows users to create or edit vector graphics. So generally when you want to create an image from scratch, you want to create a company logo. Okay. From nothing, you want to create a company logo. Okay. Or for example, you want to create a banner. Okay. Using lines and shapes and all that. Okay. So then the best software to use is graphic editing software. Okay. When you want to create an image from zero, from 
scratch you want to create an image your best option would be to go for graphic editing software okay so example serif affinity and there's something known as adobe illustrator okay so these are graphic editing software they are the best choice for creating graphics on the other hand let's say you have a photograph and you want to improve the brightness you want to crop the image you want to add some text to that image you already have the image you just want to edit it then the best type of software is photo editor photo editing software or photo editors okay they are used to edit and enhance digital photographs and images so examples we have something known as Jim which is done by a company called open office and we have something called Adobe Photoshop by a company called Adobe okay so so we have been going through so many application software so many categories of application software in the meantime uh, it would be a good idea if you can start attempting question number eight all the way to question number ten okay there are three questions over here question numbers eight nine and ten okay in our next video we will be continuing from sound editing software